clickable, right? So first of all, I'll make all these rows clickable and whichever record I'm going to click, I will just open one dialog box. Dialog box means basically a pop-up control. Uh, and uh, once I click on it, right? So I will pass the information of clicked record to that object. Okay, to that, uh, sorry, to that dialog box. Okay, let me show you that how it works. So first of all, we have to make this row clickable. So how to make this row clickable? So for that, we need to add one property in this column list item. So this is a column list item. Here we have to add one type property. Type equal to active. So this property is whatever I'm typing here. It's already available in API reference for that column list item. OK, once you add a type property and now let's see the output here. Now can you see now the rows are clickable? OK, which anything I can click here now. OK, because how it is clickable now based on the property which I have added here. I've added the type as an active. So next I'm adding a press event to that clicked rec, uh, row. So. So I'm just I will add a code for that. So when user is clicking on that row, I will open one dialog box. So for opening a dialog box, I need to create one folder for fragments. After that, I'll create a new file in this. OK, so a file is created in, in that. And now I'm just I will add a fragment definition in that. So here I'm going to add a dialog. Said so that we need a contain. For this fragment definition before I add, so we need to add that XML NS colon core. Because fragment is from core and we need one more for default library. OK, now we need a simple form code here. So I'm just I'm adding one title to this dialog box. OK, now inside this we'll add one simple form. So I'll just copy the code OK from this. Copy that, paste it here, and now go back. Where is that code? Just adding a two libraries, one more. And now just, I don't need all this. So label and text. The first day is product ID. Product ID name. Think what we have next. Supplier name and date of sale. Date of sale. And last we have quantity. That's it. And after that, I'm, I need a, a button which will close this dialog box. Then I'm adding a code also here for 
closing the dialog box. So, so far it's ready now. Now let's add a code which will basically which will open the dialog box. OK, so for opening the dialog box, as we say that. Um, I'm just adding one this level variable, not this dot or dialog. If this dialog is not available, then we will do this dot load fragment. And inside the load fragment, we have to provide the name of the fragment. So the path is this. And it's coming from. Fragments dot. Dialog. After that, I'm writing then. Then it is a callback function, so which will basically returns the dialog box. So we will store this dot o dialog equal to o dialog, which will get from that function. And we have to do bind this here. Yeah, and we have to open this. Dot. We have to open this dialog box. So if this dot o dialog is already available, then directly open without loading a fragment. So now let's see. OK, so if I'm clicking on any record, so now the dialog box is opening. Address, oh, sorry, this, this is coming from the simple form. I'll add a code for close also here. Just add close. OK, so now at least dialog box is open without any problem. Fine now, so now how to bring this information, whichever record I'm clicking here, how to bring that information to get the clicked record information. We always have the context of the clicked record, right? So basically whenever we are clicking on any record, that context is already available with us. I'll tell you how. So let me inspect this. I'll put a breakpoint here. So this is our on row click, right? So just put a breakpoint on this 44 inside this function. So before we open a dialog box, first of all, how we can get the path of clicked record. Now I clicked on it. So I have already kept O event. So O event, it's like a, a argument which will carry all this information or parameter. O event. Now just expand this O event. Now if you see it just returning the ID of clicked record. OK, it's, it's, uh, it's just returning the ID of the clicked row item. But now this row item, it's not giving all the information what we want. So we want the object. We want the clicked record path. So that path where it is available, it is always available inside binding context. So there is one thing always guys, whenever you want to get uh, 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 information about the clicked record, you can you can always get that information in binding context. OK, so if I expand this whole binding context, can you see this path here? So this is what path we want. OK, so whichever record you're clicking, so that information you will always get it inside O binding context and that also inside the S path. So how to get that? I'll tell you. So you just need to write O event dot get source. Why get source? Because if I expand this inside the M parameter, we don't have anything inside the O source only. We have that O binding context. So that's why I need to write O event dot get source. Then after that, I will write dot. Get binding context. And now I'm getting undefined. Why? Because. The model which I binded, it has some name, right? It has some name. So what is the name to that model which we bind it to the table? It's a product model. Copy that. Go back here and just provide that model name inside this O binding context. So always remember guys, 
So if you are calling a get binding context method inside that we have to pass name of the model. If the model name is not there, if it is a default model which you have binded to the table, you don't need to pass any model name in this. And now after that you can write get path. So get path will return you the path of that clicked record. And let's say instead of getting the path, you directly want to get the actual object which is binded to that record. So instead of get path, you can write get object. See, so you will directly get the clicked record as an object. So now will be, will that be easy to bind that? So rather than getting the object, it's better that you can you can same you can do the binding with the help of path. Instead of get object, if you are getting the object, right? So manually we need to get that object and we need to set text one by one. So instead of doing that, you can directly follow the standard binding syntax. And and how you can bind this path to that simple form with the help of context binding. So context binding, context binding or element binding. It's like you're binding a particular context to to any control you want. Means so I just want to bind a, uh, I want to pass, a pass this binding information. I want to pass this clicked records binding information to a simple form and that simple form is located inside the dialog box. So if I want to uh, if I want to make this binding information available inside that dialog box, I will use element binding or I will use context binding. It's the same only. OK, so let's let me do one thing. Let me copy this get path. Let me go back here. So I'll store that here. Go path. So I'll store here. And after that. So if it is opening right. So I'll write here after it opens, I'll write this dot dialog dot bind element. We have one method bind element and inside the bind element you can directly pass the path. Sorry, this is the actual path which we have here. And you can also pass model name. So model name is. Product model. So this bind element guys, you can call it on anything. You can directly search here. Bind element. Sorry, one second. You can go for any. Let, let's say I want to do it for dialog box. Dialog control and you can search here. Bind element. OK, when you go to the bind element, so bind element, it generally has two parameters. One is the path. Path means the actual path and second is the M parameters. So if you if you don't want to pass a parameters, so you can directly pass this path as a first parameter. But if you are passing it in the uh, M parameter, right? So that's why I have provided like this path and after that model. So from where we are getting this path and model. If you go back to that, if you see there is a manage object dot manage object dot object binding info, you, you just have to click on that. And inside that what we have, we can use this different uh, things like path, model, parameters, suspended, all these things you can use. OK, so that's what the same thing I have used here, path and model. OK, so once I do, once I pass this binding information to the dialog box, so the next thing is I can directly do the binding in this. Means I can directly write what is the model we passed here? The model name is product model. You can directly write like this and the pro property name means whatever it's passed here, right? So everything you can copy paste there directly. So you just copy and paste it there. For supply name also just copy. Paste there. OK, now if I run, so I think hopefully I, I should be able to run now. I should be able to see the records. 
the click record information it is visible uh, now inside the dialog box. Now let's see that first of all. Okay, so now I'm just clicking on the this this record. Can you see now? Automatically I'm getting all that information. Okay, so now whichever record I'm clicking, that information will be available in this. Okay, guys, if you see there is one thing which I have did one mistake. So this binding path we have to call in two places. In else also we have to do. Because for the second time when I clicked, the records are not updating inside a dialog box because in else also we, we need to do that, right? We need to do that bind element. OK, fine now, so it's bringing. So let's say I'm clicking on this flat, which is HT1035. Yeah, it's updating now. I right here for HT1041. Yeah, it's coming here. OK, guys, so this is the basic thing that we have to do for bind element. 